Many common problems can be solved easily using the edge trigger of your scope, but sometimes a more complicated trigger mode, such as pulse triggering, can shorten the troubleshooting cycle. As the picture shows, there is an arbitrary waveform with different pulse widths. We can use pulse trigger to isolate a pulse based on its time duration and trigger on it in a stable and repeatable way. Pressing the auto button on most scopes will configure the edge trigger. If the waveform has multiple edges that meet the trigger condition, the waveform trigger will be unstable. Now let's choose the pulse trigger. Since the minimum pulse width of the waveform is 50 microseconds in this example, we should set the pulse condition as positive pulse larger than and set a pulse width value larger than 50 microseconds. Now we can see the waveform triggering has stabilized. You can see that there are also many other parameters that can help lock in the signal of interest, such as positive pulse width larger than a value, positive pulse width smaller than, positive pulse value smaller than a value and larger than another value, negative pulse width larger than a value, negative pulse width smaller than a value, and negative pulse width smaller than or larger than another value. The trigger is identified by the, by the pulse width, not 50% of the rising and falling edges to the next 50% of the rising or falling edge. For positive pulse triggers, the trigger point stays at the falling edge of the pulse. For negative pulse triggers, it stays at the rising edge. This concludes the introduction of the pulse trigger function. Here are some key points. You want to choose a suitable pulse condition that matches your signal, set suitable pulse values for your signal, and then adjust the suitable trigger level. Thank you.